Hello and welcome, this is Afshin Ratatsi and Yvonne Ridley joining you from the heart of the English capital on board HMS President. Yes, as the new coalition government gets to grips with power, we speak to a new boy about his first few weeks as a British MP and ask him to use his military experience to tell us what all of this means. It's US General Stan McChrystal's war plans for Afghanistan, but uh, this photographer gives us the real picture about what is happening on the ground. There's very little to laugh about in Afghanistan, but one film director used it as a backdrop to his movie Four Lions. The result is going to be a British box office hit. And we reveal the secret advisor behind the scenes who helped director Chris Morris tackle a sensitive issue, which will enable the Muslim community to laugh alongside everyone else. Grab your 3D glasses, Ritansi and Ridley's cameras were invited onto the red carpet along with Arab and British royalty and celebrities for the premiere Arabia, another blockbuster in the making. And uh, for the first time ever, people of faith and uh, no faith will be able to get inside Mecca via the silver screen for the annual Hajj. We also discovered that life outside politics can be a bundle of laughs. This famous former Member of Parliament reveals the funny side to his shock defeat. Well, it seems everyone's beating a path to Afghanistan these days, from soccer star David Beckham to the Defence Minister here, Liam Fox, and uh, Britain's new Foreign Minister, William Hague. Of course, from the confines of military barracks and presidential compounds, it's really hard to gauge what's going on on the ground, but Marisol Adler took time out from directing a US hit series to focus her own camera on life for ordinary Afghan citizens. And this is what she had to say. <laughs> Lots of progress since the Obama administration sent uh, 30,000 more troops? Um, I wouldn't say progress. I did pass a stretch of road where there's all this John Deere equipment, cranes and so forth for building, but I haven't really seen any of that equipment used for anything. It and just sits there. You've taken some amazing photographs uh, from, from your time there. How did you see in terms of the danger, because the, the number of uh, bombs have been increasing in recent weeks, uh, how, how do you see it? Uh, progressing or, or degenerating? Well, I tend to go low profile, so I don't ride around in convoys or dark sunglasses. I go with a scarf and I go with locals and I haven't had any trouble. But I, most people tend to stay in the compounds. I don't think they venture out. I never see them in the market areas or things like that. Because um, we get embedded journalism here mostly. On the yes. Um, and the last time I was in Kabul, it, it was full of NGOs, so there must be lots of activity, lots of good deeds, reconstruction <laughs> happening. Um, in theory, I think on paper that's the idea. Uh, I don't see it actually transpiring though. I think uh, with the Afghan first policy, and are you familiar with the Afghan? Afghan First is this uh, cooperation between U.S. aid and uh, so on to, to regenerate Afghanistan using U.S. taxpayer dollars. Yes, exactly. Um, and if you're an Afghan company, then you can you submit bids. Everyone submits bids. There's lots of American mid-level construction companies that actually are engineers and have the experience and expertise to build a school or a road or a police station, whatever. Um, but if you're an Afghan company, you will get the bid. You'll, you'll win the bid, whether or not you have any experience in constructing anything at all. Um, often there'll be a family of brothers who would just all open up a company, just come up with names, but they've never built anything. So you're saying the system is being abused? Very much so. So they'll be awarded the contracts, but they won't build anything. You're based in New York City. There's a huge recession on. Do Americans realize that their money is uh, going on, uh, I don't know what exactly, in I, Afghanistan while they're suffering at home? Well, I ask the question all the time. This is where my tax dollars are going to. I don't understand it. It's just, it, as long as it looks good on paper, they seem all satisfied. Just tell us about the photographs then, uh, in particular. Well, I started taking um, extreme close-ups of children because they, they seem to be so resilient and have so much 
light and hope in their eyes that I think adults lose over time. And I'm always stunned that a child could be in the most horrible, hostile environment and still have such joy in them. But I've taken a lot of photographs in Afghanistan, not just of children. Uh, there's one woman in particular uh, that I, I've taught how to uh, cook Western food because she can make a lot more money on the compounds or different houses cooking for internationals if she has a Western menu. And she's just, this woman has been through so much, like hell and back a thousand times and she has so much joy and life in her and I'm stunned by that. Um, and she has, I mean, she probably makes $300 a month and Will that's considered good. Will you be having good. an exhibition of your work so that you can share it with the wider world? Eventually, that's the plan. I, 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 I want to do that. I think it would be better set in a gallery than one off on a, a newspaper article or a magazine or something because it's a story. There's such a story Because there. you work on the Law & Order TV show in New York. Isn't that very different from... Uh, well, yes, but I must pay the bills. <laughs> you know, so that's how I pay the bills. And I love it. I love, I love it.